Okay, I don't know if you guys are big prophecy people, (laughs) but um, I had someone prophesy over me back in 2020. Like there was some things I needed to overcome from just my own past and things that I've gone through. I was watching a lot of like Jocko and David Goggins. I was YouTubing like how to how to get your manliness back and uh, like use the pain to move forward. Probably some Andrew Tate in there too. Unfortunately, definitely some Andrew Tate. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. Today is a fun one. Really excited. We haven't seen so Janine excited. in so long. So excited. We get to interview Janine and her new fiance, Caleb. Caleb. This was really fun. They are fresh off getting engaged. We're talking days away from getting engaged. Yes. So to be able to relive their experience. They did a whole episode on their show, Happy and Healthy. So listen to that if you want all the yes. details. But they give us... um. Wait, I just had some questions because I love when people tell their story and it makes you think about your story of getting engaged. Yes. And so we did that. And then we also talk about how uh, they knew that they were supposed to get married. We talk about their breakup yep. that happened before they got engaged. Which I thought was very, very relatable. Yeah. Being a girl, I just like, I went through that with you and how she explains what was going through her mind and why she broke up with Caleb and all these things, I thought was really, really helpful. And we also talk about why they wanted to get married. Like why? Yeah. Why do marriage instead of just be together forever? So thank you, Janine and Caleb. Congratulations to Yay. you two. And if you want to find out more about Janine and what she's up to, we'll link her podcast and social handles down below. But hope you enjoy this one with Janine and Caleb. You guys freaking just got engaged, so congrats. My gosh. Thank oh you. Oh my gosh. It looks like you're getting ready for an engagement photo shoot right now you're in white you know, yeah. like crisp background just a normal fit, you know? yeah just a normal day you know it looks like face filters are just like the yes. skin quality is yeah. perfect caleb's <laughs> teeth are the the we, whitest i've ever seen we any need better teeth lighting have, you seen, <laughs> our, have you seen Since teeth that white in your life <laughs> no i've never seen that is anyone yeah. hers he has pretty white teeth yeah i'd say is that not a compliment you get a lot because if it's not i'm surprised i i my phobia growing up was like having yellow teeth. My dad would brush them like four times a day. And so I just, I brush for like two minutes and I put like two strands of toothpaste on. Two wow. strands? Two strands. Twice like the recommended. The you might be ODing on fluoride, but wow. it's okay. Dude. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all look so tanned. Were you guys oh. at the beach or something? Um, we were in Greece for a week. So, what? Yeah. All right, we'll just roll into this episode because it's always like talking to an old friend when we speak with you, Janine. And Caleb, great to meet you. Um, I want to start. Well, Janine, let's just see the ring. Can you mind? Just giving yeah, us a I close know. up. I don't. I think Caleb let's... didn't mind either. Can you guys see it? <laughs> wow. It's beautiful. What do you Good mean? job, it's Caleb. It's blinding, Janine. <laughs> it's, it's wild. Yeah. He did such a good job. I'm so proud of him. Oh, my God. Okay, I Caleb. Get back to work soon so I can. I feel like <laughs> Bank, reimbursed Bank of America. Yeah. So Caleb, I feel like you're one of our first like recent fiancés that we've interviewed. And I'm yeah. curious, how did you feel like the week leading up to it and like the day of? Oh. Uh, so much stress because <laughs> just the amount of coordinating between Maddie cuz I went into it with like Maddie helping me plan it. And I had an idea, and she was like, we're going to quadruple that idea into mm-hmm. something that. bigger. Love and that. so just like all the little pieces leading up, the weather, and then everyone was having flight issues. And so it was just like, I told all my buddies, I said, this is not the week to test me. Like the day out, mm. I was like, don't mess with me. Some don't, of them were trying, Don't though, make fun of me. But it was oh, good. Can you hit record on there, actually? Just the backup audio. The green button. Good call. Yeah. Thank I you. I kind of like, I like planning. I like you know, creating memories. And so it doesn't stress me out too much. Kind of different. Yeah, stress. Like I, I get so stressed out planning anything. <laughs> so he thrives on that. Had you ever been more nervous for anything in your life? <laughs> oh, no. I was like, my heart was just like racing. I was only thinking about like, oh my gosh, what if I have a stroke? <laughs> you know, and I knew I was like being recorded. So I was like, don't sound like an idiot. And then honestly, like in the moment, it's like the Lord gave me the words to speak. It was just like I kind of forgot everyone else was there. And it was legit the best day of my life. Aww. Same. It yeah. really was. Same. Yeah. Janine, did you know it was coming? Um, I had a suspicion because 
I, I kept thinking, I'm like, if it would be any weekend, it would be this weekend. And I was hoping it would be this weekend or that that weekend because it's always been a dream of mine to be proposed to on the beach. And I haven't really said this, but um, should I tell the prophecy? Yes. yes. What do you I mean? <laughs> okay. I don't know if you guys are big prophecy people, <laughs> but um, I had someone prophesy over me back in 2020. I wasn't even, you know, I was single at this time. I didn't even know Caleb existed. Um, like April 2020, this girl was like, hey, I don't know why I got this dream of you. Um, you were being proposed to on the beach. And the guy had like light brownish hair. And she like even sent a picture of like what his hair kind of looked like, like the style. And it kind of looked like that. They, they said what? he had a receding hairline. No. <laughs> <laughs> like he's going to have a slight receding no, hairline. No, she didn't oh, say that. Man. But... I mean, I, but I never said to Maddie or Caleb, like, propose to me on the beach. I wanted it to be very organic. Um, but I just kept thinking, I'm like, I, there's no better weekend to be engaged than this yeah. one. So it all worked out great. But I did have a little bit of a feeling. I honestly felt like there was something different in my spirit that day. Um, my girlfriends were acting really weird. He was texting funky. I thought it was going to be Saturday, but he proposed to me on a Friday. But then in the afternoon, I was like, oh, it's happening. I was like, this is going down. And I was ready. I got my makeup done. I was like curling my hair, using my cute white dress. I'm like, I'm ready. So, I mean, it's pretty fresh. How many days ago are we talking? Did, are you engaged now? Today, last week. Wow. Uh, Wait, is it Friday? Oh, yeah. We yeah. were week. a week, week engaged. Dude. That's crazy. Yeah. So, I already got the phone call that I need to help more with the wedding planning. Already? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I already I, got that phone call. I was like, do we need to rewind last week? Yeah. yeah. I think I bought magazines the same day, and I was like, okay, I need to do this and Average this quick. and this. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Yep. Um, I get it. Watch your podcast that you walked through the whole engagement story. Loved it. But I am curious. Um, so the dichotomy of emotions, I feel like, between the, the proposer and the proposee, like when I propose to Sean, that whole day, I was a wreck, dude. I had never been that nervous. I was trying to dial in the logistics. You're worried about everything going smooth. And the girl just you know, shows up, and it's a good time. But I'm curious if you could both bring us back to that moment of, one, Kayla, I'm curious, when you dropped down on the knee, like, what did you say? And like, yeah. did it go as you planned? And then, Janine, when you, when you heard those words, what did you feel? Yeah, so waking up that morning, I didn't have a car or – our car situation got messed up. It was pouring rain. It was 50 mile an hour winds. It was cold outside. Like everything was just like not looking well. And then I didn't even know what I was going to say. Mm. So like all my buddies were like, what are you going to say? I'm like, I will figure that, you know, figure that part out. And like going into the drive, I like threw my AirPods in and I just was like, I got into the word a little bit, wrote a little letter. And I, I'm more of like, I, I don't like to, I don't like things to be robotic. I like things to be organic and natural. Mm. And I had like, I was like in the car, I was writing about our relationships and like my promises to her of like what I will keep mm. as her husband and all the things. Tell us some and of those. Yeah. So like, I just told her like, you know, I promise that like my heart's ignited for you like right now, like in this season, but I promise that 10 years from now, like I will choose to like ignite that mm. in my heart. Like it's a, it's like, it's easy for me right now to wake up and love her every single day. But I know there's, there's going to be moments within a relationship that it's going to have to be a choice. And, you know, I've seen so many men, you know, stop choosing to ignite that flame, like, you know, in their heart. And so, and then towards the end of the letter, I just got like a picture, you know, what's funny about where I proposed that in Florida, that's where I grew up going to, vacation as a kid and I just was like looking out the window and I was like man this would be so great I could like picture like our family like coming to Florida together in the mm. summers and you know creating these memories and I just got like overwhelmed like I literally felt like this like pressure on my shoulders in the car I've just like I, every being in my body was just like felt like the presence of God and like chills and I was like okay I, I know what I'm gonna say and so mm. when I got down when I got her to the spot to where I was proposing, I, I just, I just knew what I, I, I knew like all the nerves just kind of went away and I'm like looking across, like at my best friend and I'm like, I can't believe like I'm sitting here right now. Like I've dreamed of this moment my whole life. I never thought it'd actually come. And 
yeah, it just was everything I could have thought of, you know, and more. And I started to like cry, like literally, as like I'm. If you if you watch the video, I get on it when I hit the knee. I legit didn't say, "Will you marry me?" For like he like choked up. It was so I cute. couldn't talk. Yeah, yeah, he like choked up for a second. I'm like waiting for it. I'm like, yeah. yes. <laughs> there's, there's a part that's like I don't know if you want me to say this, but there's actually a part where it's cut out in the video where she goes, "Okay, stand up." <laughs> he was like crying but i was like stand up so i can kiss you yeah. and i like i was like stand because i was so excited and i wanted to hug him but he was like having a moment of like tearing up but yeah. it was would you describe your emotions as like were you feeling nervous or like what what's your experience yeah, janine here, Jay. Yeah. for Me? you yeah um i wasn't nervous it was like it was more like an excitement nervous. Like it was kind of like, you know, you get that like nervous pee before you perform or something, or maybe before, you know, you go and do gymnastics or you play football. Like there's like that nervous pee feeling um, as we're walking to. Yeah. Is that is Well, when I'm going to propose, I'm walking to the spot and she texted, Maddie texted the photographer was, photographer and was like, Janine has to pee. <laughs> Because I was literally so nervous. I went in the bathroom and had a moment with myself. I looked in the mirror and I was like, I was like, okay. Like, that was a long time. I was like, I know I this is happening. And I was in there for a minute where Riley starts knocking on the door. She's like, Jay. And I'm like, yes. Because I, I had a feeling it was coming. Um, and mm. But it wasn't like I was anxious. I wasn't scared. I was just like, okay, like this is a moment you pray for and wait for your entire life. And it was so weird knowing that it was like actually happening to me. But when I got there and when I was with him, I was just so excited and I was like crying the second I saw him. But it's just, it's such a surreal moment because I mean, Lord willing, you only have that, that moment happen once where a man gets down on a knee and proposes to you. So, you know, I'm 29 years old and all my friends have gotten engaged and married before me pretty much. And um, he gets down on one knee and I it, it just like, I couldn't even comprehend the feeling of like, Oh, this is like actually happening. Mm. And in the proposal video, you know, you hear me say, this isn't real. This isn't real three or two times because I couldn't believe it. I was like, this isn't real. Like this isn't happening mm. to me and him getting down on one knee. It was like, I can just, I like locked the moment in my brain. Cause I was like, Oh my gosh. So it was so amazing. Wow. <laughs> Janine, I remember how many years ago did we meet? I was trying to figure this out. Five? Um, Maybe? Back in Six or five years ago, yeah. 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 Um, something that I love about you, and I distinctly remember from like getting to know you five, six years ago, was because Andrew and I were married at that time, and we would talk about boyfriends, and we would talk about like your future, and, and I remember even fr back then, you were so guarded, like you were such a strong person. You were like, I am not settling for someone. Like I know he's out there. I know I'm going to find this man. I think we uh, threw some suggestions your way. You're like, no. You're like, no. <laughs> and <laughs> you were just yeah, like, you tried one yeah. of your friends and I was like, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> but you were so strong minded, which I, I absolutely <laughs> love. Be younger. Uh, and I'm just curious, like full circle moment, you're engaged. What was it about Caleb where you were like, this is him. Like, this is my man, my husband for the rest of my wow. life. Uh, first of all, thanks for saying that. That's so crazy. Yeah, I don't exactly remember where I was at that time in my life when I met y'all. I'm pretty sure I had just gone through a breakup. So I was all fired up like, I will not settle. Mm. But um, he, honestly, it was the way that he pursued me because you know, I think a lot of guys in the beginning, they're really excited. They're like, you know, I'm going to pursue, I'm going to love you. Month two, month three rolls around and you notice a shift. You notice that they pull away. They don't try as hard. They promise all these things to you and they don't fulfill them. And he just consistently pursued. He consistently loved me the way he led me, the way he prayed for me. He wrote me letters. I mean, a lot of guys like in the beginning, yeah, they would write these letters and they would do all these romantic things. And then after the end, I was like, you said you would take me on this date or you said you would do this. And then they just wouldn't anymore. And so I noticed there was a difference in the way that he loved me. I genuinely always tell people, I'm like, the way he loves me is the way that Jesus loves me. It's like a relentless pursuit. It's um, unconditional. It, it It's like, even when I would be like, I can't do this. This is too much. I'm scared because I wasn't used to this type of love. I would try to run away. 
he would be just like this safety blanket of like, hey, I still love you. Hey, I'm still here for you. Mm. Hey, I'm not going anywhere. And I'm like, why? I'm like, you can go. Like, you're freaking me out with this kind of love. He was so like consistent. You put me through it. I, I kind of did put him through it because I, I was not used to that. Um, but I think it's because the Lord wired him for me to love me the way that I've always dreamt of being loved, but I wasn't used to that. And so, A, I knew on the first date I was going to marry him, but it, there were still some challenges in between. Like there was some things I needed to overcome from just my own past and things that I've gone through. But him being willing to be consistent and faithful and show up and back up the words that he was saying. It's like, you want a man that's going to back up the words that he's saying. A lot of guys say a lot of things and they don't back it up. Mm. Um, and also we just, I was like, man, we have so much fun with each other. <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't help but like remember that. Like we actually broke up in between for like literally two weeks. And um, why? It was like 11 or 12 days. I, I freaked out. He said why? why? I, yeah, I, I full fledged freaked out. Dude. I was like, I can't do this yet. I, I this is too she much. Broke my heart. I, I kind of broke his heart for a bit. I'm so sorry. Out of nowhere, too. I was like, what? Really? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I How'd that conversation go? Out. What'd you say to him, Janine? Oh. What did I say? Yeah, you were like, I can't. I'm done. Get out. I just said, um, I said honestly, I I don't think this is a forever goodbye. Can I tell a story? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. So I just went to Maddie and Grant's wedding. And I'm on like cloud nine. I'm like, this is amazing. You know, just met all the friends. And it's like, it's Halloween. I'm making us dinner. And I'm just like, I could feel it like in my spirit of like something was off. So I was like, kind of like over dinner was like, what, what's wrong? Like, what, what's happening? Like, what are you, what are you feeling right now? You're talking to me different. You seem a little cold. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, we sat over dinner and it like hit me. I was like, oh, I'm about to you know, get broken up with. And so it actually ended that night with, I need time to think about it. You know, and so she waited a week and then we met. Didn't talk week. for that week? No, well, we took a couple of days apart. I wrote her an eight page letter. Wow. It was insane. Actually, it was nine pages. I went to insane. work the next day and I grabbed a pen and paper and I was like, I was so mad. And I just like, just didn't stop writing. My man went to work on that paper. Dang. And I dropped it in her mailbox. And I was like, she's going to think I'm weird. I don't care. At least, like, sh she can, you know, have that to, like, know that I wrote an eight-page letter. And, and like, it honestly, like, removed my – I was so annoyed and upset. But after I wrote it, I was like, okay, I'm good. Like, whatever happens, mm. God's plan. And so we met that next Saturday at the lake here. And um, it was the best breakup I've ever had in my life. It was so fun. We hung out <laughs> afterwards. She almost, she tried to kiss me. I did not. Yes, you did. I did not. She tried to kiss me. Our faces got really close and we were like, are we about to kiss? And then we were like, okay, no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. Wow. We didn't though. Just for, you know, people wanted it. <laughs> yeah. I left Man. and I was like, that was weird, but okay. And I thought we were done. I thought I would never probably see her again. I was like, I was about to catch the next I week. knew I was going to see you again. He said, um, he said, are you sure you want to do this? And I said, Actually, no, I'm not. And now he's like, why are you doing this? And I was like, because I feel like I'm supposed to. Like, I genuinely feel like the Lord asked me to lay it down. And I needed time to be alone with the Lord. And I fasted. I prayed. I waited to hear from the Lord again. And then when I did, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm reaching back but out. But the story gets funnier. I know we didn't probably want to talk about our breakup. But yeah. <laughs> the next the next weekend, my cousins came into town. I took them to our first date spot where we went to dinner on our first date. And we had the same waiter that we had on our first date. Fernando. Federico. Oh, and my bad. I'm going. <laughs> I, I'm, <laughs> it is fe oh, Federico. Federico. Yeah. I went to I went to pay for the food and I'm like going through my credit cards and it's her credit card in my wallet and her ID. And I'm and like, I lost that for and a while. I'm like, what the heck? Like two minutes before that, she comments on my Instagram story. Um, cause I'm wearing the shoes she bought me for my birthday mm -hmm. and she says nice shoes with a winky face. And I'm like, how <laughs> dare you comment on my Instagram story after you broke my heart. Wow. And now I just found your credit card and license. And, um, so I reached back out the next day. I was like, yo, I had your credit card and license. And she was like, actually, can we talk? And then, yeah, I only, I only winky, like winky faced him because I knew I was about to reach back out. Otherwise I wouldn't have done that. The old winky face. Drew a little man. winky face. Action. I remember the winky face. Does, it oh, goes yeah. a long way. 
All right, so I want to talk about a couple things. One, are you guys big on like looking at signs, like you finding your license after she uh, comments on your Instagram post, or like? So, yes and no. I think you could take it too far, but I just thought it was funny because I was so mad. I told her when we broke up. I said, "Don't confuse me. Mm. Don't. If you if you want to talk to me, just call me and we can re talk about getting back together. But like, if not, <coughs> so please, please respect me enough to like not confuse." And so when she did that, I was kind of annoyed, but then I found her license and her credit card and like immediately like softened my heart. Mm. And I was like, huh. And then that night I actually had a dream that we got back together and I was in her living room. And, and your mom had a dream that night we got back what? together. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I had a dream a day before that we got back together. So yeah. So I wrote down like seven things that I wanted her to say if we did get back together and like she hit everything and yeah. so you were pretty beat up by it, Caleb. You know, I was really mad the first week, but after I, I don't want to be with somebody who doesn't want to be with me. Mm. I think ultimately I, so I was like, I'm hurt, but I'm also, you know, life is good. We'll, we'll move on. We'll uh, use this. Uh, I was watching a lot of like, Jocko and David Goggins. I was YouTubing like how to how to get your manliness back and uh, like, use the pain to move forward. Probably some Andrew Tate in there too. There unfortunately, was definitely oh, some wow. Andrew Tate probably moments. Um, so yeah, but once she wanted to get back together, I was like, sure. He's like, she wants me. <laughs> you want this is, it's a broad question and a vague question, but I'm curious: why get engaged and why get married? Let me answer first. You can go first. Um, we just feel ready. We felt like the Lord had showed us so much and had spoken into us. Um, and we both just feel like now is the time. We're kind of like we don't really need to see anything else. Of course, you could always find out more. But we feel ready for the next season. Um, I have prepared as much as I can with counseling, Christian counseling. I've read every single marriage dating book possible. We've met with mentors. Um We've talked about all the hard things. We've been through hard things. And ultimately, I really do feel like there is something in our relationship that God is going to amplify with us being together than us being apart. And I think he is a big missing piece. Not that I'm, in, I'm incomplete without him, but I do feel like he's a big missing piece of my ministry. I feel like the Lord wants to use us to do something together. Mm. Um, and I think we have a general idea of what that is, but we don't know quite yet. And there's things that he's teaching me and the Lord's taught me within this season in this relationship that has grown me so, so much. So I see God using our relationship to better each other and to advance the kingdom. And ultimately like that's what marriage is for. And what we believe is that, you know, like don't get married just to have sex. Don't get married just because you're in love. It's like, it has to be greater than you. And we believe that the Lord is going to use our relationship for something bigger than us and for the kingdom. So, you mentioned Caleb uh, imitated how Jesus might love you. And I think, like, I'm so excited sitting here looking at you guys just just engaged. I don't know when the wedding's going to be, but I'm excited to go to it, Sean. Uh, <laughs> Y'all are <so> <laughs> And then, like, we're seven years into this thing, so not that far. But I've already – it's it's so, so amazing to look at the effect that Sean has had – on me and hopefully vice versa. And then when you start bringing kids into the picture, like it's a, just a different type of love, but it all really sheds a lot of light and brings a deeper understanding of this like biblical Jesus, you know, heavenly love. It's like, dude, when, when you're seven years in to a marriage and your wife, you know, hurts you deeply, it's like, what are your, what do you do? Like, is it, is it a covenant love mm -hmm. that sticks you around or it's just beautiful and it's cool and it uh, hurts a lot of times, but um, I love it. I think marriage is the coolest thing. Have you guys read the meaning of marriage by Tim Keller? I already finished it. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's so amazing. good. Yeah. Andrew gave Andrew, me that book. We like... grabbed that book, babe. We grabbed that book. <laughs> Have y'all read this book? Um, I, I actually was just talking about this on my podcast, the sacred search by Gary Thomas. Wow. Oh, huh. -uh. I've heard about it. Oh my gosh. You recommend this to every single one of your listeners, especially the ones that are single, because this changes. It says 
Um, what if it's not about who you marry, but why? And it gives mm-hmm. a greater purpose to marriage. This book is incredible. Well, and I think that's what I was alluding to when I asked you like the marriage question is I love that you guys are pursuing marriage. I feel like we've talked to so many people who are like, I don't need to get married to know that I love my person and I mm-hmm. will spend the rest of my life with them. And yeah, it's like this new age concept of I don't need a piece of paper to tell you I love you. And it's yeah. missing the point. And we talked to so many people who it's like a generational thing right now that I think is very, very toxic, but people believing that if their marriage or their relationship isn't easy, then it's not supposed to be like, then they should break up and move on. And kind of like you saying there, it's not about the person. It's about the why. If you can remember that through a marriage, it will change everything because like Caleb said, in 10 years, you're going to go through a hard time where you wake up one day and you're like, I don't really like you today, but you know what? I <laughs> love you so yeah, much yeah. and we're going to figure this out. Oh, boy's not always going to love you like Jesus will and, and you know, <laughs> yeah. vice versa. I right. hate to say it, but. No. To answer your question on what I think, we sh- you know, engagement and marriage, you know, my as a kid, my mom always told me like, you want to marry someone where you wake up at three in the morning and you walk down the stairs and you see your wife you know, reading scripture over your kids and praying over your kids because they woke up in the middle of the night. And because that was like a glimpse of like what I got from from my mom. And so there's so many qualities in her that I I saw from my mom, like the the loving and she challenges me. She challenges me so much to where it's like, all right, you know. (laughs) You can stop now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I think I've just been under the mindset of like, we are in a generation where you're, you guys are correct. Like we're getting married older. We're, we're having men are becoming more passive. And I just think that like life's an adventure. It's like, choose who you want to do that adventure with. If life is hard. Choose who you want to do life hard with. You have like a, it's like us together are going to be more powerful. We're going to be more strong. Um, if we keep the Lord first, but we also keep our healthy relationship first and we can just do more. And, I just view marriage as such a um, a gift and a blessing and having children. Like that's why I'm younger, but I've always had the idea of being young. Like I'm going to get married young. I'm going to have kids young. That's just, that's just. And you will. Yeah, so. <laughs> How old are both of you? Um, I'm 29 and he's 24. 24 and a half. Nice. 24 and a half. He's nice. turning 25 <laughs> in October. Nice. nice. We're four and a half years apart, which is also, yeah, pretty crazy. Big part of our story. Yeah. But it worked. Do you think I thought uh, she was 32? So when she said she was 28 at the time, I was like, she's God. so young. What a relief. <laughs> so you guys have been together for how long? Uh, a little um, over 11 months. Yeah, almost a whole year. Yep. But I M- like minus the 10 days. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you did what yeah, in 2020? He, he had known about me since 2020. So he liked oh. me for how long? <laughs> a good couple years. Yeah. Wow. I took one of her friends out to lunch in 2020. Lunch. It was actually uh-huh. a really good date. <laughs> he likes to use that word lunch. I'm like, you mean a date? <laughs> it was just a lunch. Oh man. Do you you mentioned a lot of your friends, Janine, are engaged. Do you feel like you're, you know, la- lagging behind your friends? Is there no? You're no, you're going I on don't. your timeline. I think in the beginning when all my friends were getting married, like when I'm 27, 28, and I was still single, and I'm like, dang. That's when I started to feel like that. But now being 29, I'm like, oh, man, I wouldn't change a single thing. I would never go back. I think I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I'm so glad I didn't get married sooner. And I just feel like everyone's timeline is different. And it's like embrace that. And it's cool because I think because I was single longer and I had to wait a bit a little bit longer, I'm able to help girls that are still waiting or girls that are around my age. And they're like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't have anybody. And um, I don't know. I just I feel like there's there's still such a gift in singleness that people want to rush away. They're like, no, I just want to get married and fix my problems. I'm like, nope, I think you need to work on those now. And I think obviously you'll still always be working on those, but I don't regret a thing. I wouldn't change a thing. I'm really thankful for the timing, everything now. And um, yeah, I think I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Do you guys, uh, do you just feel like you're destined to be together? Like, was it written in fate that you would end up this way? (laughs) <laughs> I, I don't want to say yes, but the amount of times I ran into her before we actually spoke was five or six in the most random moments. I remember one time I was running around the lake and she's on the longboard and you know, 
rides by me. This was like a year and a, two years ago. I remember one time I was getting my hair cut. I look out the window and her and Maddie are walking into a coffee shop. But um, I never saw him. Like, that was a thing. It's actually funny. Like, okay, I don't believe in fate, but I do believe God can highlight the person that he wants you to be with. But we don't believe in the one. It's like, ultimately, God showed us and laid us out, laid it out for us of like, hey, this would be a good person to marry. And I still had to choose that. You know, he had to still choose me because, you know, we both could be like, oh, well, we'll just go find someone better. Like, you're not this and you don't have this. So we'll go find someone better. But the Lord, I mean, the amount of things the Lord showed us is like actually ridiculous to where I was like, I'd be an idiot not to marry this person. Like, that's mm -hmm. basically how it felt. But I had even prayed before meeting him after I had, you know, gone through breakup. I was like, God, I'm so sick of trying. I'm so sick of trying to like make this happen or manipulate a man into liking me type of thing. So I prayed. I was like, I want a story where the guy saw me and he just knew and he wanted to be with me because that was a couple of my friend's stories as well as my sister's stories. And I wanted a story like that. I was like, I don't want to like force this. Like I want God to be the one that ignites, has the man ignited for me. And that was exactly the story that I got. And like, I didn't really have to do anything. Like he saw me, he DM me, we, we followed him back. I followed him back on Instagram and he asked me and I was just like, all right, let's just see what happened. And it all just like flowed perfectly from there. Mm. So I don't believe in fate, but I do believe that God can write a beautiful love story for you. Wow. It's been so fun to watch you do your thing, Janine. My sister's a huge fan of yours, which is, I get why what? now. Yeah, it's like, well, I, I don't know. She if brought you up one day and we were like, Janine? Yes, let's go. And <laughs> she found out that we knew you and she was like, you know Janine? We were oh like, oh, gosh. wow. Okay, yeah. Tell her You're... I say hi. Oh, yeah. we will. Actually, would you mind saying hello, Christine? Oh, she my gosh. She would lose it. Hey, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> it's she's his little gonna, sister. Love She'll that. love it. Um, I okay, do... wait. I have a question for y'all. I'm uh -oh. going to pose it back to you guys. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are seven months in and seven, um, seven years, seven not years. seven months. Oh, my God. Seven years. <laughs> That'd yeah. be terrifying if you're seven months. <laughs> you guys are seven months in. Do you have any advice for us in mm. both engagement season as well as being newlywed soon? So much. <laughs> How much time sure. do we like, have? Give us all the wisdom. Um, I feel like engagement is probably one of the hardest seasons you'll go through because you live in a limbo. Yeah. You're not quite married, but you're more than dating and it's confusing. And everybody throws all their opinions and advice at you. Including and, Sean and I. Yeah. Right now. And I would just say. <laughs> we're asking for it. <laughs> I would say keep it short and look forward to getting married. Go. Um, That's what I said yesterday. Remember that your wedding day is a starting line. It's not a finish line. And if you both choose each other every single day of your life, even if it's like ugly and hard and you're not getting along and whatever phase of life you're going through, I don't know how to explain it. I've tried so many times, but like I look back on our wedding day and it was the most perfect day of my life in that moment. But looking back on it now, our love was so small because every single day wow. we've chosen each other and it's just like we've gotten through some hard stuff. Yeah. But it, it just makes your love so much bigger. It's so cool. I uh, I get asked, like, well, how'd you know Sean was the person you wanted to marry? And I think... What's become apparent over time, like Sean is, Sean has flaws, believe it or not. No. And so do I. But it's no. like, <laughs> she is the one for me. I don't believe in the one either, but I do to the extent that like, I believe that she is for me. And that's I, like Sean saying, you choose your partner every day. It's mm -hmm. like, that's the universe that you need to live in is the one that's like, Janine and Caleb stay together forever. Yeah. Andrew and Sean stay together for, forever. And it's like, having that perspective as opposed to this like more passive or maybe like a loser's mentality of like, Oh, Hey, things are tough. And, and I don't know, maybe it's not worth it. It's like, no, like they're the one for me. So we just need to make it through this hurdle, this argument, whatever it is. It's like, they're, they're the one because you cho chose them to be the one. It's your choice. I have one more thing. Jeez. We could talk for hours. Um, we've had the privilege of interviewing so many amazing couples ranging from like teens to in their 70s and 80s. And something that I think has become really apparent, 
you guys talk about your faith a lot in God. There is nothing you can't get through. We live in a twisted, dark world. You're going to go through a lot. There's nothing you can't get through. And we've seen it with everybody we've talked to. So. Amen. I, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we believe that. Yeah, I'm, I'm filling this up. I'm so excited <laughs> for you guys. Um, what are you guys most looking forward to? As far as what? Okay, you stop. No, not that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Besides yeah, that. gives me this look. I'm like, we're I, on a podcast. That's not, even what I was, that's not even what I was thinking. <laughs> I was actually thinking of not having to freaking drive home. It's like the yeah. most annoying part about dating. Like my yeah. sleep since we've been dating, it's just like, I cannot wait. She's going to be gone. She's leaving for a trip today. I was like, can I I don't know if the, you can. Hear you can say it. I'm I was not like, here. I was like, you're not here. I was like, because I live with two other dudes. I was like, can I sleep in your bed while you're gone? Yeah. I just need he needs some, like a good night. I need rest. blacked out curtains. I'm gonna put her shades on my head. I'm gonna spray the aroma <laughs> all over my face. <laughs> and I just can't wait to be pampered, you know, and be a husband <laughs> and wake up every day and uh, make her a coffee. You know, we'll live happily ever after. Wow. Wow. I'm honestly, um, I'm a big traveler, so I'm really yeah. excited to get to travel the world with him and show him more of adventures because he hasn't traveled the uh international a lot yet but i'm excited to get to have those memories together um and then also i don't know i think it's just like more like the mundane i think can yeah. be so fun if you choose the right person like we love you know watching movies we love cooking together we're drinking coffee going on walks so i think that's just going to be so fun yeah i i remember that well, the whole driving home yeah oh. It's it so would be like I midnight. Away, so It'd be like 1 a.m., but we would always yeah. drive home. And it was yeah. just yeah. like, oh, I'm tired of this. But it's good. Mm -hmm. But you living with the boys, Caleb, like, the that's best. the other thing about engagement. I would, like, this mm -hmm. is a phase you know, and enjoy where you're at. Yeah. There's no better time than, like, right now. And there's a lot of sure. beautiful things happening in your life. One of those is, don't forget, you spending time with the boys. Yeah. So, dude, it, my apartment's insane right now. <laughs> our other buddy's about to get married. So he's been living in our living room with all his stuff for the last few days. And it's going to be there for three more weeks. And then I have two other roommates. It's like, they have like a rotating door of dudes <laughs> that are just like in it. Now, like every time I come over, there's like a party. They're playing games, they're video gaming. I'm like, this I'm is, in. It's, a, it's a fraternity. It's such I'm a coming down, bro. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, I promise you, you, you will have the best time of your life. Jenny, <laughs> uh, I gotta ask. I, I wanna, I wanna expand on you. You saying you freaked out and then you broke up. Like, mm -hmm. is that was that a self image thing? Was that like you not being ready for commitment? What led to that? The freak out, as you call it. You want me to share some stuff? Of course. Dude. Okay. You got a ring. So um. I yeah. I, I would say it was honestly multiple things. One. Um, I had gotten out of a relationship not too long before him. And so I tried to take things really slow, but he was definitely way more ahead than I was. So, you know, he was telling me like, I love you. I want to be with you. I want to marry you. And I was like, whoa, like I'm just, I'm just figuring out this. Like I was still processing that. And then, um, I started to realize that I started to get this crazy fear of marriage all of a sudden where I started to see marriage as this thing that took from you. It was super sacrificial that I couldn't travel anymore. I couldn't live my single life. I was like, I want to be single longer, but all of it was like very like unhealthy. Like none, none, none of it was like godly. Um, and then I think also him being younger, I was freaked out by that. I was like, you don't, you know, you don't have some things figured out that I want a spouse to have figured out. But I always trusted in who he was and who his character was. And that's like why I got back together with him. Because even though he didn't have some things figured out, I was like, well, this is still a good man. But I was wrestling with like multiple different things of like, I, I think I need to be single longer. I think I need to pray through this more because he was really wanting to be like, I want to like do this. Like, I want to like make you mine. I want to marry you. And I was like, whoa, buddy, like I am not quite there yet and so fully freaked out i was just like I, he had just met a ton of my friends at that point and um i was like i'm just not ready for you to meet more of my people he was wanting to meet my family i was like i'm not ready for that yet my guy was yes. ready for it he was but ready my only defense is a week before she told me she loved me 
Did I? Uh. Yes. Oh, my bad. <laughs> so, it was a little confusing. So, I was definitely being, I was just a hot mess around that time because I do, I did know I wanted to be with him and I felt like the Lord had showed me, but I wasn't willing to accept it quite yet because I was like, I need to feel peace about this for myself. Is that right? <laughs> I was going to say, we had something really similar at the lake house. I remember, I don't know if it's like more of a girl thing than a guy thing, but I remember having those feelings for the first time of like, oh my gosh, like this is serious. Yeah. And I freaked out. Every irrational fear came out about social yep. media and people's opinions. And like he wasn't in the place that I was. And I was just like, exactly like you said, it's almost like something I always explained it to Andrew. In my head, it was too good to be true. And I was so afraid of it failing that I would rather have just ended it before it failed. Oh my gosh, you nailed it. Literally, that was my exact emotions. I was like, most relationships haven't worked out, so why will this one? So I'm going to go ahead and end it so that I don't get my heart broken one more time. And it's weird. You do so many things out of fear. It's crazy. Yeah. So I think this ties in. Caleb was earlier talking about he had the vision of the family playing on a beach mm. in Florida. I think there's something so powerful about having this positive vision for your life as opposed to only trying to focus on the things you're not trying to turn into right like oh well i don't want to become an alcoholic or whatever like that is so much smaller and less of a motivator and a lot of other things then it's like so much less powerful than i want to be here with my wife and two kids yeah. 10 years from now i want to be in floor and like having that vision that it's not going to turn out that way probably like you might be in freaking california on the beach or wherever yeah. but being being drawn by that magnet of of uh positivity is extremely powerful i think so keep that up and i think part of the hurdle that sean had i think when we were dating was i could be wrong but like you didn't feel worthy right mm -hmm. she was like wow ah, i can't i can't be in this relationship because I've made X, Y, Z mistakes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, um, now focus on the, it's a fine line. You know, I, I don't know where it lies, but it's like, don't, don't let your insecurities be a yeah. hurdle to your love. Right. Like, don't let yeah, that happen. Totally. She would at many points at the beginning, be like, why do you like me this much? Or why do you love me? Like, why do you still choose to be with me? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we just hung out for three hours and laughed for 24 seconds mm. and had the godliest conversations. And also uh, I, and that would, I would be so confused. I'm like, wait, I think I deserve someone like you. And and so it took a little while for, I think, for her to be like, no, this is what I deserve and I deserve more. And um, and now I think I've created a, a monster in the sense of <laughs> she is, you know, like, I don't, I just feel like she's just doing her thing. And like, she's, she can lean on me pretty heavy for a, a lot of things, and vice versa. And it's like, it's cool to see, like what you said earlier, you can get through anything. I think a lot of dudes would have felt what I felt in the beginning and just been like, this, there's no insight to this. And I just think that like I felt in my spirit, like press forward and like there is going to be goodness on the horizon and we'll get through a lot of this stuff. And, and yeah. so. And I was thankful because he he's actually very optimistic. And I've noticed through him that I can be quite pessimistic, which kind of stinks. I'm working on that. But he's always been the one that's casted the vision. He's been like, Hey, look what we can overcome. Look what, like he, cause that's what a man does and a leader does. And I needed that because when I would be like, no, all hell's, all hell's going to break loose. This is going to fall apart. Part crap's going to hit the fan. Da, da, da. Like I'm like rifting off all these things are going to go wrong. And he's like, but what if it doesn't, what mm -hmm. if it all goes right? And I'm like, mm. I've thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, so have you heard of this concept that the Hebrew word for Eve in the Bible, like Adam mm -hmm. and Eve means beneficial adversary. Have you heard this? Mm. Mm. Dude, I can't stop thinking about the fact that I used to get so frustrated at Sean because she had this different perspective of like, whatever, raising kids or, hey, I don't want to move to this place because X, Y, Z or let's not purchase this thing because whatever. And I was like, why can't we be on the same? We're not on the same page. This is so frustrating. But it's actually so beautiful to think of marriage as like a legitimate team where Sean has one skill set and Andrew has a different skill set. And those skill sets are largely like our difference in perspective. And as soon as I, this is two months ago, I realized this. So I hope you guys come to this realization faster, but it's like, as soon as I stopped getting frustrated by that difference in perspective 
and started like jujitsuing it into this like, oh hey, it's actually really healthy that she's yeah. not just a okaying and like rubber stamping every one of my ideas. Like that's not good. Like she needs to veto yeah. some things because it's a healthier outcome when we come to a compromise and like move forward together. Like yeah, anyway. Yeah, so good. I hope you guys yeah, experience good. that. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my sh- weaknesses are strengths. <laughs> but, uh, oh, <laughs> um okay so if your percep- perception of marriage before janine was like limiting you from traveling and experiencing all these things what yeah. is your perception of marriage now um now i'm like what a gift that we get to do that together i i think i really had to work through some stuff because I had seen so many marriages either fall apart or be really difficult where the woman was just very like oppressed or she, she would complain like, Oh, this man doesn't let me do anything. And so I just saw marriages like, Oh, you're robbing things from me. And, um, and he never did that. Like he never was, and he never even gave me an inkling to do that, but I thought he was doing that. And so now I'm like, Oh, we get to travel together. Like we're, we're a team. We get to work together. And I think it'll be so much more fun because I think, single self was like, no, I want to do me. I want to go do my own thing. And I I wasn't even aware that I was fully thinking that, but that's kind of my attitude. And so I think now I'm like, no, it's not a sacrifice. Like God, God painted it this way so that we can be unified and can be one together and do these things together. And now I'm just like excited for it before I was so freaked out, but now I'm like, no, I'm excited. Like we get to do these things together. And, um, and he's never once tried to rob me from things, but even just what you were saying, like where there is the balance, like I can travel every day of my life. Like I just, I love traveling that much. He's going to be the person, even though I'm like, that's so annoying that you're preventing me, quote unquote, preventing me from traveling. He's doing that because he's looking out for me because he wants to help me reach my goals, to save money, Mm. to be present, to be with my family. So I'm seeing there's a difference where I'm like, oh, you're not doing these two prevent me you're doing it to protect me and that's also what god does for us in a lot of ways so mm. way to go babe <laughs> it's almost like you have a podcast i know yeah. do i have a podcast i'm happy and healthy or something <laughs> i was gonna say speaking of where can people follow your journey because i you better have a wedding video and all this stuff yeah um well a you can listen to our podcast our podcast oh my god wow wow <laughs> That was hard to say for a second. Wow. Our podcast, <laughs> Happy and Healthy. And then my Instagram, Janine Amapola. Amapola is A M A P O L A. And you will see us posting all sorts of things on there, as well as my TikTok. I'm a little bit more open and honest on my TikTok. All right. Can I ask? A, sorry. I'm going to give you a second to think about this, but then I need both of you to answer on my count of three at the same time. What month and year? You think the wedding will take place? Oh, you have your answers? <laughs> Don't no looks. Okay. Yep. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three, go. November, November 2023. November 12? Yeah. Uh, oh, we I said a date too. Oh, he's oh, locked wow. in. Okay, so we're on the same page. Okay, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. Dang. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, when you said short engagement, Sean, I was like, we know. <laughs> wow. Which yeah. some people good. have dogged on us for that already. They're like, let me guess, you're gonna try to get engaged in six months or less. And I'm like, Yep. <laughs> Well, and again, a societal flaw, I think that's toxic, but people, again, we've talked to so many people who are like, I need to make sure I know this person fully before I ever take the next step. And it's like, you're missing out on one of the greatest parts of marriage. Like if you, if you actively choose quickly in your dating relationship that like, this is going to be your person going through that journey in marriage is so much fun. And people who have eight year engagements it's like come on man mm-hmm. you're not actually engaged then because right. you're not committed what are you doing yeah. yeah and i always hear them say that you end up marrying like five to ten different people because that person changes every two to three five years so it's like you you've got to be committed for the long haul because the person you see now will be different in five years so oh, that's yeah. what we're like we're choosing each other do, <laughs> do we have a honeymoon discussed Miss World uh, Traveler. We don't have anything finalized, but we're thinking Europe. We yeah. don't know quite yet. France and um, Italy. Wow. Well, but we don't have anything solidified yet. Those yeah. are just dreams, but we don't know for sure yet. Yeah. Dang. Well, I'm so excited for you guys. Congratulations. I mean, yeah. 
Thanks. I, this is the coolest journey you're about to embark on. And for those listening who want to learn more about Janine and Caleb and what they're up to, I would highly recommend it. They have great perspectives. And uh, if you like this show, you'll probably like their show. So um, thank you for the time, guys. And uh, we'll be in touch. Yeah, we're, thank we're, you, guys. We're hanging out, dude. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm coming out of the <laughs> and you. hang at the frat house. <laughs> Let me get your number. <laughs> me and Sean will watch the kids together. Are we doing kids? Have we talked about that? Oh, give me some time, but yes. <laughs> no, 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 not immediately, but yes, eventually. Two, okay. two or three. Okay. okay, wait, you have that discussed? Two or three? Yeah. Two or three. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe it, maybe a fourth if it just happens. Wow. If the investments hit right. You know, maybe yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if my body's doing five. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank Bye. You guys.